Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. Today I'm here to talk about all the books that I read in September, uh, which was quite a bit. So I think I might as well just go ahead and get started. So the first book that I finished in September was After Hours on Milagro Street by Angelina M. Lopez. This is such a fantastic book. I knew the minute I heard this book was going to exist that I needed to read it because it's set in Kansas following a Mexican-American main character immediately that I knew I had to to read it because my family lives in Kansas and then on top of it I did not know but the hero in the story is a historian a history professor so that was an extra layer of awesomeness and the history this book touches on uh, it explores the history of how Mexican Americans got to the Midwest in the 19th century so after the Chinese Exclusion Act that uh, Chinese immigration was completely halted but the railroad still needed labor and they started recruiting Mexicans brought them to the Midwest to places like Oklahoma Kansas Nebraska Colorado and many Mexican stayed in the Midwest and so you have now Mexican Americans in the Midwest who are like four fifth generation and the way Lopez interweaves that history in this book is amazing it's just it's really great the only kind of if here is the main character super prickly very prickly she keeps um, making fun of the hero for something that really she should not be making fun of him for not making fun of him and she's giving him such a hard time over and over again and at first i like i thought about dnfing the book because i was like wow why is she being so mean i don't need i don't want my heroine to be that mean to the hero where i think that the hero can do better um, but about a third of the way halfway through the book you get start getting hints of why she is so prickly and then we find out why and you realize that she has good reason to um, be so sensitive and to be hard on the hero. Uh, I really really enjoyed the story if you can get past how the heroine is being mean to the hero at first I think you'll really like it uh, if you like high heat romance novels you will also like this there's sex on cha in chapter one how that happens I'll let you figure that out but uh, I really really enjoyed this one the next book that I finished was On the Hustle. This is book number two in the Dating in Dallas series by Adriana Herrera. And I'll put all the um, information for the book down below. The book just came out and I really enjoyed it. I love Adriana Herrera. And I did do a dedicated review to this video, so I'll limit my thoughts here and just direct you to that video if you're interested in more. Uh, but Adriana Herrera really weaves in a lot of social justice issues into her romance novels. And I love the way that she does that. Um, and so this was one of those books that was um, uh, really good. A little bit angsty, so if you don't like angst, um, you might not like um, that aspect of it here. Uh, but uh, it was low angst enough, like the angst was low enough that it worked for me. The next book that I finished was Never Caught, The Washington's Relentless Pursuit of Their Runaway Slave, Ona Judge, by Erica Armstrong Dunbar. I love this book. <laughs> it's a work of nonfiction written by a historian, but it's written for a wider audience. She takes the story of this um, woman, Ona Judge, who was enslaved by the Washingtons and just really like transports you to the time period into the life that she led with um, the first president of the United States and his wife. Uh, and here you really get to learn a lot more about Martha Washington. Martha Washington was not a nice person, like not a nice person at all. Uh, Washington, when he died, freed all his slaves. The problem was that um, like most of the slaves on his plantation were not owned by him. They were actually brought into the relationship by Martha Washington. Mm -hmm. And everything that Martha Washington had inherited from her first husband was entitled. So um, Washington didn't have, like George Washington didn't have um, any legal rights to them. And in fact, Martha Washington would not have let them free anyways. Um, the story of Bonajach is so interesting. Um, and I think this is one of those things that like, 
everybody who's interested in American history, everybody who lives in the United States needs to read this book, especially if you've been taught only the heroic version of American history. Okay. Oh, and by the way, Never Caught was a book that was recommended by um, Bookish Afro Latina. I believe that's her uh, handle on Instagram and TikTok. I will list all of her her information down below because uh, yeah, she's a historian that talks a lot about these topics and um, I've really been enjoying her content. Uh, I don't believe she has a um, YouTube channel but I will find everything I can uh, on her social media and link it down below. The next book that I read was A Half Built Garden by Ruthana Emrys and this is a really interesting sci-fi book. It's definitely sci-fi but it's also a book very much about raising children and family. The premise of the story is that aliens land on planet Earth and this is in some futuristic world in which the planet was nearly destroyed but a group of humans have really been working hard for a couple of generations to repair the damage that was done to the planet and they've been making a lot of improvements and advances in that direction. Then aliens land and the aliens have come to rescue humanity from a doomed planet. They say, hey, this is what happens with any advanced um, life on a planet. Your technology advances so fast and so far that you're destroying the planet and we've come to rescue you. So hop on our ships, let's go. <laughs> well, now there's, you know, fashions within Earth uh, that have different um, plans on what to do, how to take up or not take up the aliens on their offer. And then the way that family comes in, I, I don't want to spoil it because it would be a spoiler if I talk about it. But at the heart of the story and what pushes a lot of the plot forward um, is an analysis of family. Um, and how important children are and how extended families can be created um, and love and child rearing and it was just it's a really slow paced domestic book it's really not about aliens it's basically about how aliens force humanity to reflect on itself and its values um, so it's a more of a character driven or theme driven book rather than a plot driven book the next book that I finished was 2666 by Roberto Bolaño. I read the Spanish version here. It took me a couple of months to read it. I read it with um, my good friend and <laughs> this is the kind of book that like you don't want to go in knowing nothing and yeah it, because it's a it's a hard book to read and for the first like 500 pages <laughs> you're like what the hey Bolaño, what kind of writing is this? Because he takes you into the lives of particular people and you follow them in minute detail at times and they're not likable people. Maybe because most humans are probably not very likable. Uh, so you start off with a uh, the lives of these three or critics, um, all European based critics who write about a writer, this European, probably German writer. And they base their whole careers around this writer, but nobody has ever met this writer. And But you get into the lives of these people, all extremely unlikable and kind of boring people. Then they go searching for the writer. They make it to Mexico and in Mexico the next book in this book is set in Mexico following this Spaniard, the Spanish professor. And okay, there's some interesting parts there, but also like, okay, what's the point? It's not until you get like well into the book that you get into the most interesting part of this novel. Now, 2666 was originally supposed to be like several different books. Bolaño had planned for this to be several different books, but uh, uh, he died like right before it was finished. And so the family decided to publish it all together. The part that is most interesting is the crime part. Uh, in Spanish, that section is called La Parte de los Crímenes, and it's the second to last section of the book. So by the time you start it, you've already read over 400 pages, and you're like, get to it, man. <laughs> but that part about crimes is about the murder of women in Ciudad Juarez. 
except the city in the, this fictionalized version is not Ciudad Juarez, it's Santa Teresa. But it's clearly Ciudad Juarez. And that part, let me tell you, that part was powerful. It's still written in the same style, so you kind of have to appreciate Bolaño's writing style, but I, like, I could not tell you how important that story is. Um, if you want me to tackle, tackle a book this big, um, it might be worth it, or it might be worth it just for that section alone. Just putting it out there. <laughs> the next book that I finished uh, was Mademoiselle Revolution. And this book was, as soon as I saw the premise, I knew I needed to read it. It's following a young woman um, who was born in Haiti to a white man and an enslaved woman. She is raised by her white father. Her mom dies at childbirth and her stepmom and uh, has two older white brothers. And the Haitian Revolution bursts as she is coming of age. She escapes Haiti and makes it to Paris. If you know your history, you know. Paris is not a great place to escape to at this time because there's also a revolution going on. And so she goes from revolution to revolution here and uh, seeing it through the eyes of this black woman who has had access to privilege but not all of privilege, right, is, is really interesting. Um, I do think that at times the plot gets bogged down by the history, which is a terrible thing for a historian to say. But uh, one of the key characters in this story is Robespierre. And if you know what happens to Robespierre and a little bit about the story of Robespierre, uh, you'll know that while he's a really interesting figure, his story during the revolution is kind of bogged down. Like, it's very specific. And so to have the plot surround and be so heavily focused on him, um, I think was, um, hurts the story overall. But I still enjoyed it. It is a young adult book, but it, the, like, the history comes alive. The history is really, really good. I, the only thing I would argue against <laughs> in this book is the romanticization of Robespierre and the kind of use of him as a kind of romantic sex symbol. Not really a sex symbol, more a romantic figure. And I'm like, mm, mm, not so much, but through the eyes of a young woman, maybe. <laughs> the next book that I finished was Let's see, The Gone World by Tom Sweatzer Litch. Um, this book I read with my siblings. Uh, my siblings and I are really into time travel stories and this is one of those twisty time travel stories. That's great. You're following an NCIS agent, a female NCIS agent, and she's part of a secret operation in which the government knows that time travel exists and it can send you into the future, never into the past, just into the future. But once you've traveled into the future, you're affected it. And when you travel back to the present, you've changed. Like the world you saw is no longer going to exist. You've changed it. And so that premise is really interesting. She is traveling forward in time to try to solve a set of murders that has occurred in her present. And so it's a bit of that crime story, crime thriller, along with a sci-fi time travel story. If that interests you, I think you'll like this book overall. Um, I was really enjoying this book, uh, but then at the end, it gets a little bit too complicated, a bit too rushed. The thriller element requires that fast-paced action, um, but because it involves time travel, it gets a little too complex there at the end. Still, overall, I did enjoy it. Uh, the next book that I read was Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon. And as the title indicates, the story follows a weather girl. She is the, the local, um, uh, one of the local weather reporters who is is, works at a television, television station. But she is really, her career is suffering because the main meteorologist, the main weather person at the channel has not been mentoring anyone. She hasn't really been doing her job even because she's too busy bickering with her ex-husband who is their boss. And um, 
she decides that she, with her co-worker that the two of them together are going to try to get their bosses to fall in love with each other again so that the whole company, the whole television station can benefit and no longer be bogged down with the fighting. It's a romance novel, Love and Sue's. Um, it's, uh, is it a closed door romance? I believe it's a closed door romance. It's not super explicit, high heat book, uh, but it's really cute and adorable. Uh, the hero in the story is, a um, is, uh, has children. So if you like that aspect in the stories, it's definitely there. And they're both like trying to deal with their own issues. And then the issues that comes up, come up with, um, coming together. Uh, there's a bit of a miscommunication element towards the end, but it is pretty quickly resolved, which I appreciate. <laughs> Next book that I finished in September was When Dying Is Not A Problem by Eloy Lopez. So uh, a publicist for Lopez contacted me and said that um, all of Lopez's books are about to be translated into from Spanish into English. He, and this is uh, this was his first published book. Um, and she offered me a free copy of it but instead of taking up the free copy I saw that the book was on Kindle Unlimited so I just went ahead and got the book on Kindle Unlimited and without any obligation to like I didn't make any promises about giving a good uh, book review or even talking about it in my channel so this is kind of a series of short stories that are interrelated it starts with a man who just won the lottery and he doesn't tell his wife that he just won the lottery, but um, he just won the lottery. And having won, he goes to the local bar, has a drink, where he's hearing stories of the local haunted house. And because he's about to leave town, he decides he, he's never been to the haunted house. He's going to go take a look at it before he leaves town. And then a series of stories begin, uh, kind of ghost stories. And it's stories about death about life, about the unknown, and I liked it. I liked, I, I really liked the, the, the story. Not every story necessarily worked for me, uh, but I, overall, I really love the way Latin American writers tackle spooky stories and tackle the subject of death. And so if you're interested in translated fiction, spooky reads, short stories, I think you will enjoy this one. And I would definitely tell you to check it out. The next book I finished was Jennifer Chan is Not Alone by Tay Keller. And this I picked up on the recommendation of Shannon over at That So Poe. I was interested in this story because it's one about bullying. Right? Shannon talked about this. It's about bullying but told from the perspective of the child doing the bully. And it was so interesting. The, you have to know before you get into the story that the author was the victim of bullying when she was young. And as she was kind of working through the trauma of that, she began writing the story and started telling it from the perspective of the bullier. And um, that being written by an author who was the victim of bullying means that the story is told with so much care mm -hmm. without kind of trying to exonerate the, the main character, but also looking at the main character as a complex human teenager. It was really, really interesting. Um, I really enjoyed it and would recommend it. And that is it. Those are all the books that I read in September. Um, my October reading has been off to a really great start. I can't wait to tell you all about that. In the meantime, tell me what you've been reading, uh, what I should be adding to my TBR. If you've read any of these books, for sure let me know, please, 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 so we can talk about it in the comments section. And thank you so much uh, for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!